Okay, let's open TikTok. Middle Easterners are white in the US. Arabs are classified as Caucasian. Middle Easterners are white, Lameo. Arabs are white. There, there are a lot of comments like these on the internet. Um, and I get it. Look, a lot of us are pretty white passing, present company included. And according to the US Census, a white person is defined as a person having origins in the original people of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. So it's settled, Arabs are white. Well, also according to the US government, this is a white man. Huh. I'd like to introduce you to Mustafa Hefni, an Egyptian immigrant who worked as a teacher in Wayne, Michigan, ew, for 13 years. One day, Mustafa spoke on a panel where he publicly identified himself as black. But the school district that Mustafa worked for at the time was predominantly white, and when they heard him say this, they were not happy. One coworker came to me and told me, a white coworker came to me and told me right after the function that he met with the superintendent, and if I don't keep my mouth shut, my educational career is over. He said, you have nothing to do with these people. You have a history and a culture. These people came from the jungle. They have, you have nothing to do with them. These people lie and steal. When I see one of them in my neighborhood, I call the police. Damn. That happened in 1987, and to this day, he is still considered white. But notice that while they were telling him that he was white, they said, you have history, you have culture, so you are white. That's going to become very important later on. And by the way, Mustafa is not a minority of Arabs that don't look white. Uh, this is my uncle. This is my dad. Adorable runs in the family. But you know the weird thing about all this? All the people calling them white are technically right. Some of you might be wondering, why should I care? It's just the U.S. Census. It's not that deep. And to that, I'll say, it's actually not just the U.S. Census. This race classification system we're talking about is in hospital forms. It's in applications to schools. I don't know about the rest of the world, but if you're in America, it's literally everywhere. And you'll notice that they almost always give you the same five choices. The choices they give you are usually American Indian or Alaska Native, Asian, Black, Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, and White. So the question is why? What's significant about these five weirdly specific races, and why is it that an entire group of people who are clearly not white are classified as such? So in order to fully answer these questions, we first need to address where does the idea of race come from and why does it exist? Personally, one of my biggest historical pet peeves is when people blame all racism on Europeans, and that's just not the whole story. Racism is probably as old as humans themselves. The idea of noticing another group's differences and then saying, ew, you look different, so you must not be as cool as me, is not only not invented by Europeans, but also was practiced by pretty much everyone ever. Here's a great example. This guy, Ibn Butlan, uh, was an ancient Arab theologian slash physician, and he wrote about ancient slave demographics or women in East Africa at the time that they were being enslaved. He writes, Nubians' character is honest and their countenance agreeable. They respect their master as if they were created to serve. Zagawa women easily get angry, are ill-natured to the extreme, worse than the Zanj or any other race of the blacks. It basically reads like an 1800s racialist paper hundreds of years before the idea of race was even a thing in Europe. My point is that it's going to be hard to find a civilization where there's not racism. All that being said, the way that we see race today is very specific. And so in order to understand that, let's take a trip to uh, colonial America, 1600s. The way the British colonies were originally set up, a wealthy minority sat around on their ass all day and owned the land while the poor majority worked the land. Not that much different than what it is today. And much of that majority was under indentured servitude. Basically, you were a slave for four to seven years. I just thought this stock video was hilarious. But your race, or more specifically, your place of origin at that time, didn't matter as much. If you were African or if you were European, you were still indentured servants, and after those four to seven years, you were free. But eventually, that wealthy minority was faced with two problems. One, those indentured servants and the poor majority were not treated well, and there was talk of violent overthrow. And two, and perhaps more importantly, the labor supply in England started to dry up, so they needed a new source of labor. And the solution? 
race. It's the perfect solution. Tell the Europeans, guys, don't fight us. We're not the enemy. We're all brothers. We're all white together. They're the enemy. You should go against them. It was literally the greatest distraction in human history. They got everyone, all these poor people, regardless of their race, to stop looking at what was important, which was money, and look at some stupid thing like the color of your skin. Okay, let's show a little bit, Meta. We get it, you're a flaming liberal. Now, some of you might be wondering, now, Meta, what does all this have to do with Arabs being technically white? And to that, I'll say, uh, fuck off. I guarantee you there's a method to all this madness. Just stay with me. The point is, is that the wealthy few created this lie of white versus black to distract everyone from the truth of rich versus poor. They then used that lie to justify the lifetime enslavement of Africans. Those people aren't full human, so we can treat them any which way we want. They had to say that because it's easier to abuse a man when you've convinced yourself he's not actually a man. Said best by the historian Philip D. Morgan, the only effective way to justify slavery was to exclude its victims from the community of man. Isn't it crazy I used to have straight hair as a kid? Oof, I could never go back. Mm. You poor, boring bitch. All these racial shenanigans was happening during the 1600s and 1700s, right? Well, not so coincidentally, that's also the time of the Enlightenment era. The Enlightenment era. Oh man, my third eye. Now the Enlightenment era was very cool. We have the development of calculus, the discovery of gravity, uh, the piano, lots of cool things, but it was also the era of spoiled rich guys jerking themselves off. Eh. Now what do I mean by that? Well, let's call this era the era of 30 hyphens, because back then you weren't just a philosopher, but you were a philosopher, political theorist, scientist extraordinaire. Everyone had a whole bunch of this, this, this to their names. Everyone thought they were an expert when they very obviously were not. And so you had a whole bunch of people talking about stuff that was just Bullshit, and race was one of them. Theories about where different races come from and why do they exist and why are white people so darn great start to become a real topic that everyone likes to talk about. And one of the major puzzles of that time was how do you classify different races? How to classify the races. Let's start with Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish uh, botanist, zoologist, taxonomist, and physician. Let's see, what did I fucking tell you? He classified four varieties of man, which were Europeus albus, Americanus rib European white, American red, Asian tawny, and African black. He argued that each variety had their own temperaments to them, like this variety was uh, more prone to being sluggish, while this one was more prone to being a genius. I wonder who he's talking about with that one. Oh, and when you read these papers, there's like zero critique of white people. It's just like, white people, the absolute best. Everyone else, it's just complete critiquing. They never, it's just, I mean, it's not much of a shocker. Anyways, you then have people like Christoph Miners, who was batshit crazy. He was a polygenist, meaning he believed that the different races of man had different origins. Yeah, pretty, pretty fucking stupid. He was kind of a popular guy who believed that blacks felt less pain than the rest of humans and that Asian and Arabs are not only less intelligent, but also inherently evil. You remind me of a boy that I once knew. <laughs> that was pretty good. No, but he actually was a favorite philosopher of the Nazis. Also during the Enlightenment, you have the development of fake sciences like craniometry, which is basically the study of school size to prove intelligence. Where it gets interesting is the founder of this field, uh, what's his name? Dickhead McGee. Samuel Morton published a work called Crania Egyptici... Egypt... This is so stupid. Egyptiaca. What? Where do you get these names? Anyways, the dude analyzes the skulls of the ancient Egyptians and comes to the conclusion that the ancient Egyptians were white. Hey. Mind you, craniometry is malarkey. He didn't prove shit, um, but you have to think he has to say that. It's kind of hard to argue that whites are the civilized race when a whole bunch of black and brown people were building pyramids while Europe was still playing. Ooh, look, I put a rock on another rock. So the solution is you got to make them white. And that leads me to our last guy, Blumenbach. Oh. <laughs> Yes, I know I have pimples everywhere. Yes, I know I'm fugly. Keep your mouth shut. But feel free to comment below. Hashtag how fugly is meta. Do it, it runs the numbers up. 
How do you pronounce that guy's name? Blumenbach. Blumenbach. My girlfriend speaks German, get on my level. <laughs> so this dude Blumenbach, who is, let's call him a racial rock star, was highly respected in his time and the definition of a complex individual. On the one hand, the dude was actually an abolitionist. He was against slavery and went against a lot of his contemporaries' ideas, like Linnaeus, like Meaners. Minus? Minus. But his theory of race would eventually become the theory that is used by racists and governments America. until today. Here's how his theory went, told in the style of an old German folktale. Once upon a time, God created the first people, Adam and Eve, in the mountains of Caucasus. Yes, this is where we get the term Caucasian from. But as time passed and the earth became more populated, certain groups traveled away and degenerated into the different races we see today. One group as it moved away eventually turned into the American race, and then the Mongolian race. But another group took a different direction and would eventually become the Malay race, and then the Ethiopian race. And this is how we got the five fundamental races we see today. Ethiopian or black, Malay or brown, Caucasian or white, American or red, and Mongolian or yellow. Hmm, have we seen these five classifications before? Oh. But here's the key to this whole Arab white situation. Under Blumenbach's classification of Caucasian, white people are not only inhabitants of Europe, but also the Middle East and North Africa. And why did he do that? This is my kooky theory, but I think it has to do with Egypt. Like I said previously, you can't claim that white people invented civilization when everyone at that time knew that Egypt was way more civilized than any part in Europe ever had been way earlier. Again, I'm not a historian, I could be completely wrong, but that's just my two cents. The fucked part about this entire story is that it doesn't end with science disproving Blumenbach and everyone moving on from this racial idea. It ends with the American government in 1915 literally quoting Blumenbach, creating this race classification as Arabs and North Africans as white, and it still being a thing to today. The takeaway I hope you get from this is that whenever you hear someone of any color, because I hear it from everyone, say Arabs or men of people are technically white, beware because they know nothing of science or genetics or anything. It's all made up. If you don't believe me, ask an Eritrean, an Ethiopian, a Somalian, who do they have more in common with? Egypt or Ghana? According to Blumenbach, it should be Ghana, but in actuality, you're almost never going to get that response.